My name is Arden. I'm 16 and I have been diagnosed with alopecia areata. I found the first spot about a year and a half ago on the back left side of my head. I had asked my mom to French braid my hair and as she was braiding, she found a bald spot the size of a quarter. Our first thought was that it had fallen out because of the highlights I had put in my hair a month prior for my birthday. We decided to leave it and began monitoring the hair loss. It continued to fall out so we scheduled an appointment with a dermatologist and had to wait about two months to get in. In those months, I continued to lose hair in that same spot. By the time I got to the dermatologist, it was about the width of two quarters side by side. She told me that I had alopecia. In simple terms, it is basically where your body thinks that your hair follicles are harmful. Your body assumes it's allergic to the hair, so it fights it off. It slowly falls out, little by little, or at least it did for me. I was given a topical solution to slow down the loss and maybe get re regrowth. It worked. It all came back except a tiny spot and, had ster and I had steroid injections done, which those helped immensely and soon I had a head full of hair once again. It was probably September of 2016 when another spot came up. It wasn't huge at first, but a few days later, we began noticing some more spots. In a matter of five days, I had four spots scattered on the left side of my head. They began getting worse as the months went by. It got to where I only the only way I could do my hair was up in a ponytail or bun on the top of my head, hair sprayed in place to make sure it didn't move. By November, I began wearing a hat to school to relieve some of the stress of being worried people would see the spots. But the stress wasn't coming from just school and being scared of people seeing. It came mostly from watching it being taken away from me. Now, basically a year after the second round of hair loss started, I began to lose my eyebrows and eyelashes. My eyebrows are almost completely gone, and the eyelashes on my right side are falling out pretty quickly. I'm also beginning to lose my arm and leg hair. Almost everyone I tell says, well, I bet you aren't too worried about that hair. Now are you? And I know they're trying to make it easier on me, but I'd rather have to deal with leg and arm hair than lose all of my hair. When I'd have to get in the shower, I'd watch it fall out and tangle around my fingers and go down the drain. I hated brushing my hair. I made my mom do it mostly, and it got to where she wouldn't let me see the brush when she was done. I began obsessing over how many spots she counted and it put me in a bad state of mind so I decided it would be best to shave it. Turns out I had lost about 90% of my hair without realizing it. When I first shaved my head, it was hard. It seemed like everyone stared at me. Still does sometimes. It was hard to adjust to. People at school became more cautious when they were around me. It seemed that they felt awkward when bringing up anything that had to do with hair. They also became more curious. Everyone seemed to think I had cancer at first and it was a little unnerving. I finally told people what was going on and they started treating me less like a China, China doll and more like a human. I became more open about it. I felt more comfortable talking about it. Michaela Vaughn, a girl of grade under me, was the first to donate. Then one of my best friends, Anna Woodall. Then Allison Jones and then Bethany Arnold, my usual hairstylist, began getting hair donations from random men and women, and she would ask if I could have them. I'm so thankful for these people. It's not easy giving up something like hair for someone else, but these people did, and I just want them to know how thankful I am. My biggest fear now isn't really people making fun of me or teasing me. It's that people will look down on me. I'm no different than anyone else. Yeah, I don't have hair. It's not something I can control. I'm terrified that I'll be discriminated against or looked down on because I don't have hair. It might sound silly, but it happens. I started to become more confident with myself when I started realizing that this is me. This is who I am now. It still gets me. It's, it still hurts. There's not a day that goes by that I don't compare myself to everyone around me that I don't envy other girls that have long, beautiful hair. But I just have to remind myself that this is who I am.
and there is a chance that it'll be me for the rest of my life. It seems like you're the only person in the world that is going through it, but let me be the one to tell you that you aren't. I finally met someone that has this disease as well. I was at a water park in Missouri and she had walked by. I couldn't really believe it at first. It made me feel a lot more confident seeing her walk around with, without a hat on. For anyone going through this, I want to give you the advice I was given. Life is made of loss. Soon all of us are going to lose something. For some, it's your hair or your sight, your hearing or a friend or family member. In those times, the only thing that will get you through that loss is the people you surround yourself with. Your core people, your family, your friends. Those people that will always be there for you. Just breathe and take another step forward. Keep moving forward no matter what. If you ever doubt yourself, turn to those cool people and let them push you to make that next step. Don't ever forget that beauty comes from within, and if you're beautiful inside, you're beautiful outside.